Hey, welcome back! In this video, we'll cover both technical and artistic terms to get you started generating AI images inside Blender using the add-on CEB Stable Diffusion Add-on by Carlos Barreto. You can type text prompts, automatically set your Python environment, download and install the train file, paint and convert basic images into AI art variations. If you have been using Stable Diffusion on the web, now you can use it with Blender to generate texture patches, images variations, and more. Okay, so let's start because I would really want to walk you through a lot of technical and artistic terms. Just as usual, go to User Preferences, click on Install, target your downloaded add-on. I will leave you the URL in the video description so that you can download it and install it. Next, just switch to a image viewer and you're going to see on this right side tab that you have the stable diffusion parameters. So we're going to talk about all of this in details later on in the video. But right now, the first thing you need to notice is all these um, parameters that you see right here, specifically the ones that says path. Now in path, you're going to input a temporary directory where you're going to install all the Python dependencies that you're going to need to make stable diffusion work inside Blender. So I'm going to target my E drive. I'm going to create a folder called Blender AI and then I'm going to paste this on path. Automatically you will see that the first button switches from red to gray. Now let's um, click on the second one which is installed V environment, virtual environment. Okay, this is something that uh, Carlos created so that you can um, have all all of the Python variables and DLL dependencies target this directory so that everything will work seamlessly. So once you click that, you will also see the next button that says create as the environment, the environment, virtual environment. And then a dialog is going to appear. Now on my machine this took around uh, 28 full minutes to completely install from zero. Okay, This is important because this is Blender 3.2. On Blender 3.3 you're going to do this, the exact same uh, similar procedure. While that's going on the only way that you can check out if everything is going accordingly it's by right clicking your folder making sure that you have a lot of uh, data <laughs> incoming there so right now it's around 1.2 gigabytes and it's still downloading so some of the libraries that this add-on requires are PyTorch, PyTorch Lite, Lightning I think it is and the basic most important one it's from Hugging Face. Now you need to create an account in order for you to accept the repo accept the terms, sorry, and have access to the repository. When you click here on the files and versions, you're going to target this file right here, SD14 CKPT. Okay, and you're going to download those 4.6 I think gigabytes. Okay? And once you save it on your hard drive, I'm going to be saving this on the previous folder location that I mentioned. You're going to switch back and forth to see if the complete install has progressed. And you can see the dialog here that many different dependencies have been installed via Python code. Okay, so this is something very important, very crucial. And you will see that down here you still have three red buttons. So I'm going to copy and paste my. 4.6, 4.2 gigabyte, 4.165 gigabyte file inside my temporary folder, the one that I created for the add-on to be installed. And next I'm going to click on import model. This is the AI trained model file that you're going to need to generate all of your artwork. Okay, this is important. And once I did that, I had to wait around four to seven minutes on my machine for the model to be unpacked, if we can say it so. It's not really unpacked, but, but rather connected to the rest of the uh, Python dependencies, as you can see right here. So if you got to this point, this says successfully installed 
everything is there everything is working accordingly you did not get any errors by the way you need to be very patient because depending on your internet connection and your machine specs this is going to delay somewhere around 20 to 28 minutes all right let's start the fun let's start writing text prompts now stable diffusion works by using keywords which are called prompts these keywords are going to help the model uh, bring the uh, creative libraries if we can say it that way um, to fix or create put together rather an image okay so these parameters right here you already know them but the important thing is that you need to have a 512 by 512 image inside the image viewer okay this is where it's going to be generated and once you get that size you're going to click on run prompt this is going to take around two minutes per image and if you notice I had four image to be images to be generated and that took around eight to nine minutes something like that you can see it right here okay and the seed is the the one number that it's going to create variations on your artwork okay and the image quality which right now is set to 50 uh, works a little bit faster than if you push up this number let's say to something like 80 or 90 um, let's just say that if you if you make this number a higher number it's going to target or it's going to require more computing power so blender finished and it generated four different images I can see some of them right here directly on the image viewer but the rest of the images are going to be living right here on the same uh, panel that then the add-on. So right now I'm going to add artificial heart with soul bursting to see what we get. Okay. So again, Blender is going to take a lot of time generating this, and while it's it's doing its work, it's not going to be responsive. Okay, Blender is going to freeze until you uh, get all of those images generated that that's around eight minutes so you yes you're going to see blender freeze for a little bit of time so here we have some different pictures that have been generated now let's talk about the next thing image to image using image prompts so we're going to switch from one method to a second method which is called image prompt and i'm going to be using blender for this but you can use any other paint program because I see that a lot of people are having like issues with uh, other software so you can use Krita but I'm going to be using Blender in this case so I'm going to create a new image again 512 by 512 uh, please do not go above this image size because it will crash or rather make an error so once we're there we've created a new image we're going to switch to paint and I'm going to paint a very very basic B okay so I'm going to be clicking here yellow color let's uh, make it more defined by decreasing the brush size now let's switch to black because I want to paint the eyes of the B you know like very basic B by the way um, now we have the body a different color by the way if you press E you can switch between the brush modes so I'm going to select line and now I'm going to draw these lines. I'm going to switch the color again. And then I'm going to draw the legs. Let's speed up the video because this part is kind of boring. But you get the idea. So you have your very basic drawing. I'm going to be saving this on the desktop. I'm going to call it B something. And now that it's been saved, you can see it right here. It matches the size, the file size, 512 by 512. And I'm going to write a prompt. And I am also going to upload or rather input the image but I'm going to type realistic B 84 millimeter lens anyways I'm going to target my desktop image by clicking on this input image button and that's everything you need to do you can see right here it's on your um, blender directory if we can say it that way I'm going to switch to render result just to clear it out and that's it let's retarget again B image pretty simple you can see it right there now I have two it doesn't matter which one of the two you pick because it's um, targeting an outside 
file directory. So I'm going to click here on run prompt. And once I do that, I have to wait again around eight minutes because it's going to generate four images. That's what number of images means on the parameters. And this add-on targets the directory, the external directory where the add-on was installed inside the Blender add-ons um, path. Okay, so that's the only way it can access it. And the only way you can see the last four generated images is by clicking there, not here, not here on the image viewer. Maybe that's something that's coming on the future, but right now this version does not do that. So if you need to see the the generated images, you are going to click here. So now um, the results are pretty impressive. I can see that my original intent was um, acquired by the AI. So this is the target directory. I'm going to navigate all the way to my user uh, profiles, user um, data. You can see the path up here, okay? So I'm going to output and image to image, and there I can see the folder which had my text prompt. And inside there, I can see my very first four images, and then the lastly four generated images. So you can change your parameters here. I'm going to be raising this a little bit more. So image quality is going to go to 80, and seed is going to vary just a tad 43. There are some uh, options that you can choose there. Um, you can switch seeds 10 by 10s. In my case, I'm just doing this for demonstration sake. So here we go. This is another eight minutes that I cut off from the video so you can see it quickly. And here are the four images. Those are being read directly from the outside directory. So these are the numbers that you need to switch and turn around in order for you to get different variations. So here, another eight minutes, um, we get this results. Look at that, four new images. And this one, it's pretty impressive considering the lack of detail that I had on my original drawing. But look at this one. This one even uh, acquired the same style in which I drew the image. And this one, it's going beyond by placing uh, more elaborated, realistic wings. So there you have it, this is, these are the basic steps so that you can start playing with Blender and generating artificial intelligence images with stable diffusion. By the way, the diffusers and tensors and everything you need in uh, configured inside PyTorch and NVIDIA Studio drivers, everything is configured by this add-on, so don't miss it out, it makes your life really easy to install. Let me ask you something, have you tried Blender? Try Blender. Blender is powerful and beyond artistry compatible.